can't win when you're a referee. One crowd think you're great one minute, the other crowd detest you, and it's the other way round within seconds. I'm talking about the man in the middle, the whistler, and I'm joined on Sunday Sport this afternoon by a man who knows what it's all about. Dr. Errol Sweeney is World Cup referee and assistant referee, coach and mentor, and he's with me on the show today. Errol, thank you so much for dropping in to us. Pleasure, Jerry. I want to tell you about this, Let Talk about living, eating and sleeping refereeing. <laughs> Hold up them cufflinks there. He has a red cufflink in one uh, sleeve of the shirt and a yellow in the other. Oh my, oh my. When you watch the game, you must watch it different to the rest of us. Do you look at it through your referee's glasses? Yes, I would. But I'd also, I'd also obviously look at the match itself. Mm. But I, I would always have an eye on the referees and the assistant referees. They used to be called linesmen. They're now called assistant referees. And what they're doing and where the position. It's in the blood, Jerry. You know, I, I, I started refereeing 70, 71. It's over 40 years ago that had been either active in the middle or involved in refereeing in some capacity. Currently, I'm coaching and mentoring. So how, how, do, you, how do you get rid of 40 years <laughs> of your life with one clean swoop? You can't. What about the World Cup? And we spoke earlier on, you were listening, I know, to Paul Lennon about the football yeah. and what's been happening with it. From a refereeing perspective, how's it been? Look, without answering the question directly, let me go around the back door. The referees are always going to be on a hiding to nothing. Regardless of what happens, they're going to get blamed. Let's just take the one incident the other night with the, the referee uh, from Spain, Mr. Caballo, doing Brazil and Colombia. That was always going to be a very difficult match. You were going to get players diving and falling and simulating and wanting the referee to give out yellow cards and so on and so on. That was always going to be that. If the referee had booked from the start, which some are claiming that he should have done or even sent off red card, he would have had every single player booked twice over and it wouldn't even be half time. <laughs> and then do you know what they'd have said? He lost control of the match. <laughs> it, it's very difficult to know whether players are diving and when they're not. Well, maybe that's not strictly true. Yes, you do know. But I think they get away with far, far too much. I think they should be left lying on the ground, regardless of their reputation or who they are. If they've dive and most times they are diving and Robin is probably one of the biggest I mean you can take Suarez when he was at Liverpool as well and, and Ashley Young at Man United these are, these are divers out and out divers and I would personally leave them on the ground and I, I'd just play on and very soon their own teammates will be at them get up because we need you back to defend but the referees currently they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't Do you think that comes from or, or has to FIFA issue the edicts. FIFA meet with the referees. Yeah. Are the referees independent of FIFA or do they have to listen to what FIFA are saying to them? No, they are not independent and that's my big gripe and I am now giving you an exclusive. I am calling for an independent referees body, very similar to the judiciary in any country, who are not answerable to the government of the day so that we as referees would not be answerable to FIFA. Totally separate, independent run by ex-experienced referees who will make the decisions. And I guarantee you, Jerry, if that happens, you'll see a major change as far as yellow and red cards. And so what if we finish with seven aside? So what? It'll only happen once or twice. And then the guys will say, whoops, hold on. But FIFA are in there with their murky little fingers fiddling around with referees. I heard a story, anecdotal, no evidence, but I heard the story that before the last, uh, sorry, during the last World Cup in South Africa, which I was at, every referee appointment from the last 16 on had to be put on Sepp Blatter's desk to be approved. Now, I have no proof of it, but that was the word going around. There is more word going around. I'm just spreading rumours, perhaps, so I have no evidence to suggest that this is right or wrong. But I'm putting it out there and it might explain why some of the refereeing decisions are not perhaps what they should be. That the referees in, in, in Brazil, because of the social unrest in the streets at, the, at, at uh, Brazil hosting the World Cup and the amount of money that was being spent on that, and people saying that should have been spent on hospitals and education and housing, you're going to get that anywhere that the referees were told to, if you like, downgrade a red card to a yellow and a yellow card to a warning. And that would appear to be the case in the Brazil-Chile game the other night because the referee certainly could have had, like I said, he could have had every player booked twice over, 
by half time. So there is pressure. You feel this pressure and that's part and parcel of it. And of course, that influences people when they're out there in the cauldron that is these knockout games. Can I focus on a, on, on a few things? Like last night, for example, Tim Krull came on for Holland uh, as a late replacement for the goalkeeper to face the penalties. Now, the cod acting he got on with and the gamesmanship to the penalty takers from Costa Rica coming up should he not have been cautious? Absolutely, for that? he should have been. Now, that referee was uh, Mr. Uh, Imertov from Uzbekistan, who's a good referee and did a good job last night. But there was a couple of little things that he should have and uh, could have and should have pulled up. And certainly that cod acting, as you say, should not have been allowed. I would certainly have warned him first, and if he did it again, I would have booked him. And if he did it again, I would have sent him off. That That is very unfair. Now, this brings into into focus again, this whole respect thing and this whole shaking hands before the game. What a load of nonsense, hypocritical nonsense. They no long, no sooner have shaken their hands and now they're taking lumps out of each other. <laughs> so what? if I was in charge of the referees, I'd say, you guys want to shake hands, go ahead, shake hands. You're not shaking hands with my referees because it means nothing. Respect what respect? Do you know this thing of the calling oh, for the card? This the annoys simulation. me. The simulation when a player gets up off the ground and points to the referee. Yeah. Surely that should be a no-no. They just shouldn't do that. They shouldn't do it. But why did they do it? Because they get away with it. Now, I was, I was on another radio station the other night and they were talking about the same thing, but this uh, simulation of yellow cards and so on and so on. Why don't the referees do something about it? So one guy says, what about if it was like rugby? Can the captain not come and talk to the referee? There's nothing in the laws of the game that says the referee can, or that the, that the captain can come to the uh, referee and ask. Maybe we should introduce something like they have in tennis or cricket, where you get three goals, like three shots and you're out. You get three chances to question the referee. After that, you don't do it anymore. Something like that needs to be done, but FIFA will never agree to that so long as they have charge of the referees, because it suits them to blame somebody. Now, this referee from Spain at the Colombia-Brazil match, he won't get another game at this, at this tournament. I guarantee it, because they'll blame him for all the nonsense that went on. So the referees and assistants become the fall guys. Absolutely. In Good the box, guys. Errol, you see all the time, and, and this has been a point, I have seen the referees stop the game before the corner kicks or freeze are taken, and they do pull out two players and talk to them if they see something going on. But in reality, Errol, when you look at the replays again, it should either be a penalty or a free out nearly every time that ball goes into the Jerry, box. why did they do it? Why do they actually waste their time doing that? Because no sooner have they gone back to the... And it starts again. I wouldn't do that. I would let the play go on. And then I'd either give a penalty kick or I'd give a free kick to the defending team. It's one or the other. But the way they're going... Uh, Evra from France, had his arms around one player, literally pulling him to the ground. Where was the referee? That is ridiculous. Why don't they? Is it a fact that you'd be given so many penalties in a game? Again, like if you well, issued the cards, you'd you know, be down to five a side. Well, one of the guys I'm mentoring at the moment is also on the FIFA list from South Africa. He gave five penalties in one game. And he gave 11 penalties in four games. And the powers that be said he needs to see a shrink. And I said... Who actually needs to see the shrink? Now, you, you mentioned about, um, about the amount of fouls in the Brazil game the other night. I think there was... What? Yes, uh, there were 54 fouls. 54, 54. fouls. Let's say, let's say all of those fouls happened by some strange thing in, the, in either penalty area. 50, what referee would give 54 penalties? But they'll give a penalty on the halfway line when nothing's at stake. Mm. Why wouldn't they give 54 penalties? That referee in South Africa gave those five penalties. They analysed them in slow motion, and he was correct, but yet they said he needs to see a shrink. Now, who needs to see the shrink? Mm. You know, if it's a free kick outside the box, it is definitely a penalty inside the box. But will they do it? I wouldn't waste my time going in and talking to players. They know they're not allowed to do what they're doing. They're pulling and pushing and they're whatever. I would leave it and I'd either give a free kick to the defending team or a penalty to the attacking team. We have the benefit in TV land of all these angles when something happens. You have cameras, you see it in the Premier League in England, we see it in the World Cup now, above actually, behind the goals, to the sides. And there you have three men, two assistants and the man in the middle, Mm. you know, running the show. One linesman actually, our assistant, looking across the field of play. Fair to say that in the majority of instances, even with the replays for offsides and that, they get it right. Yes, they do. It's incredible. And they only have one chance at it. Actually, every single player and every match official has a camera on him. So if he blows his nose 
the wrong way. It'll be picked up. So they are they are on camera for the inter- for the duration of the match. Every match official. Every single player. That's why they know. You see a crowd of players when somebody scores and you say, who the hell was that? Those three or four heads together. And they can pick out the person who scored because the camera is on him. Now, the same with the referees. Referees don't have the, the luxury of looking at something in slow motion and from several different angles like they have in rugby or cricket or, or even tennis. They don't have that. Perhaps they should. And I wrote a blog recently uh, arguing that point that perhaps they should. But then the cries will come back from... All in sundry. Oh, you're slowing down the game. Yes. Oh, it's a fast game. It should be allowed to fly that. Well, how else are you going to do it? Now, the law says in Law 5, the referee's decision is final on all matters in relation to the game. So the referee is God. Now, some people take that too literally. Yes, I understand that and have done in the past and probably are still doing it. But there is a happy medium and we're not getting that. Some new things have happened in the game since you and I spoke last. Uh, The goal line technology has come in. You welcome that? Absolutely. Big help to everybody. The spray can, (laughs) (laughs) the foam, whatever you like to call it. What do you make of that? I saw saw a a cartoon on Facebook last night where uh, there's a husband and wife and he's screaming at her and he's put the little foam down and she's not to move 10 yards from the remote control. (laughs) Uh, Look, Isn't it a sad state of affairs that that has had to be introduced? Why is that introduced? Because the player with the ball is going to move the ball forward. And the the, the wall, as soon as they get the referee's back turn, are going to move a yard or a metre forward. And that, again, goes to the, honest to God, Jerry, the cheaters that are playing the game. Not all of them, but some of them are actually cheating, that they would come forward... But doesn't it help? It is a help. Oh, absolutely. I'm not saying it doesn't, and it's brilliant, and I agree with it 100%. I'm saying, let's bring in more. Let's bring in more to anything that will help the referees because they don't get a second chance. What about the uh, other officials that we've seen deployed in the Champions League this year and the Europa League for, uh, for the last couple of seasons? The extra officials behind the goal... Of much benefit because I've watched games and I'm just wondering, do they, they ever call anything? Do they ever help the referee? Not much, in my opinion. Jerry, they're a waste of time. They're wasting their time. Initially, that situation was that they, that, that a, he's called an additional assistant referee, an AAR. And he was on the far side, which is where he should be. And then apparently what I'm told was that the referees themselves said, no, put him on the same side as the other assistant running the line. And I thought, what the hell is he doing there? He's going to get in the way. If he's looking to see if the ball... His, his whole focus is to see if the ball crossed the line or not. See, Michel Platini, who's the president of UEFA, there's a little power battle going on there. He introduced that whole thing. In fact, he introduced the respect thing as well. But he brought in this. It's only used in Champions League. They don't use it in any other tournament. Mm. It's only used in Europe. These guys are... Let's come back to the World Cup before we finish and, and, and the final stages. Now, you have the semi finals, and it's interesting. South America against Europe in both Involved, of the semi finals. I wanted to ask you this. Let's say it's all South American. Will it be a European referee? And on the other hand, if it's an all European final, will they go the opposite and take a South American referee? Well, interesting, in the quarterfinals, you had um, France and uh, Germany. And the referee, Mr. Patana, from uh, Argentina. And then you had uh, Brazil and Colombia. And you had Mr. Caballo with the ill-fated game from Spain. So So they they did do it. But that's no guarantee that it will be that way. Um, It'll depend on which teams are involved. And they'll assess, they'll look at the referees and see who's best suited for the job. It, It certainly would never be from the same country, obviously. But there's nothing to stop it from being from the same confederation. So that could happen. Yeah. And will you ever see the day that managers will be allowed? Well, they do comment on referees in roundabout ways, although they've quietened them up quite a bit. They don't mm. say much anymore because they'll be in trouble for it. Do you think the referees ever, Errol, should be given an opportunity to talk? To uh, no, no, not individually. No, I think there should be a referee liaison officer who will speak on their behalf, perhaps, but certainly not them to go on television because then it's going to end up in a row. And likewise, the saying the players should be allowed to talk to the referees. I don't think they should be allowed to talk to the referees at all. Because once you start explaining, you know that old saying in business, once you're explaining, you're losing. Once you start explaining, you say something, then the player will say something, then the referee says something, and it ends up in an argument. 
Absolutely not. I wouldn't agree with it. Errol Sweeney, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for dropping in. And I know we've got a message from Aziz Mahani. He's in Moscow, but it's not Moscow in uh, Russia. It's Moscow in Idaho. Correct. And he's listening in this afternoon. Ah, to you. Good afternoon, Aziz. <laughs> actually, they're eight hours, um, eight hours ahead of us. So it's actually... It's only about 8 a.m. in the morning. There you are. He's off at the crack of dawn to have a listen to his mentor. Uh, Errol Sweeney, again, thank you so much. And just to mention that Errol is, of course, a World Cup referee, an assistant referee, coach and mentor. Thanks a million. Thanks, Jerry.